Thank you, Lord, for loving 
me and thank you, Lord, for blessing me. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole and saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Let us all with one accord sing praises to Christ the Lord. Let us all unite us all to praise and all. you're here. If you're visiting with us this morning, you're our honored guest, and we certainly appreciate you being here this morning. If you if you think about it and you wouldn't mind, we'd love for you to fill out one of these connect cards uh, just to have a record of your attendance, get to know you a little bit better. We won't bother you and bug you, I promise you that. We just want to have a record of you being here. If you're worshiping <coughs> with us online today, we're so thankful and glad that you can be a part of our worship service as well, so thank you for attending a couple of updates uh, and a couple of news items this morning I want to make you aware of. If you are a member here now, we're going to start pushing this the next several weeks since we're starting services back fully on May 1st, and I'll talk about that in a minute. If you are a member here and you have not been participating uh, in worship uh, here, here uh, at Berea, uh, maybe you want to help teach a class, maybe you want to help work a nursery, whatever you want to do, we love and need that help. There's forms back in the back hallway on the bulletin board. There's one for men and one for women. Uh, if you have not filled one of these out recently and you would like to participate, uh, we certainly could use the assistance here. So just be mindful that that is back there and we would love uh, for you to help out in that capacity. Which leads me to, to what I just mentioned. We are so looking forward to Sunday, May the 2nd. That's the day that we're going to come back together uh, and combine or back from two services and have one service here at Berea like we did a little over a year ago. That service will begin on Sunday, May 2nd. It's going to go back to the way it was before. So if you don't remember, let me remind you. Worship is at 9 a.m. Okay, That's how that's going to be. And classes will immediately follow at 10 a.m. So we're looking forward to Sunday, May the 2nd. Please, please make notes of that and keep that uh, with you. We will have, uh, and, and it, look, if you feel comfortable wearing a mask to that service, you're more than welcome to do that. Uh, we are also going to have a, a place in the, in the back in the, in the, uh, we, where the old kitchen is, uh, where if you are, are, uh, want to attend that worship, and that will be a mask required service, okay, back there in that area. So we don't want to exclude anybody, but we do with the uh, progress that we're being seen made in our community. And in, uh, in the world today, we do want to get back to worshiping our, our God the way that I think we all want to, and most of us need to. So that is a good thing. A couple of additional things. Don't forget that the Young Marriage your Retreat is still on for May 21st. That's going to be at Fall Creek Falls. If you'd like to participate in that, please see uh, Jonathan Forrest uh, or myself, and we can help get you the information needed for that. And then don't forget tonight, join us here tonight after our evening worship as we celebrate uh, Kobe James and, and Jen Beadle's uh, upcoming marriage. We'll have a little shower for them tonight after church. And here at Berea, we do it a little differently. This is, everybody's invited. This is not just a ladies thing, okay? I was skeptical about that when we first started coming here six or seven years ago. But after I got to taste the food that's there, I go all the time. <laughs> so it's pretty good. You guys are going to enjoy it, I promise. So look forward to that tonight. I'll turn it back over to Brad. The next song this morning will be To Christ Be Loyal and Be True. Please stand as we sing. 
Our scripture reading this morning will be taken from the book of Acts, 
chapter 4, verse 13. Acts chapter 4, verse 13. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled, and they realized that they had been with Jesus. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we're, we're thankful once again when we can come together and assemble in your name and praise your high and holy name. We, we come before you humbly this morning thanking you for those blessings that are seen and those that are unseen. We're so thankful for the institution of of the family and we pray that you'll strengthen the, the families across the world but amongst our number we pray that you'll watch after the children and, and guide their way keep them from harm we pray that as as we as we go on through life that we'll say and do the right things as parents and those that that influence we pray that they they too will also say and do the right things we're so grateful for this church and the ones that make up this body we pray that that will be a shining light in this community and that people will look upon your church for the good deeds for the positive manner we pray that we'll continue to strive to do the things that you would have us do we're thankful for those that protect and serve pray that you'll watch over them we know dear lord that there are those among us that that are ill and we pray that it's your will that you'll restore their health watch over those that tend to them guide the hands of the surgeons and the doctors that tend to them we pray, dear Heavenly Father, that we'll appreciate the time that we have here and that we'll not waste it. We, we, we hope and we pray, dear Lord, that we'll be able to meet the needs of this community and that we'll be able to spread the word of Jesus throughout We're so thankful for your son that died on the cross and gave his life. And we pray that, that that sacrifice will be ever fresh in our memory and that we'll remember that sacrifice often. And we pray, dear Lord, that as we come today and we remember that we'll do so in a, in a way that's pleasing to you and that's respectful. We pray, dear Lord, that you'll watch over us, guide us through this life, and guard us from harm. Watch over us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. That song is going to be When This Passing World Is Done.
Kevin brings our lesson this morning, we'll sing it as well as my soul. And please stand as we sing. Both of our song leaders did a great job today. <laughs> it just is melts my heart to see my little man there leading, singing, and praising God. Little children <laughs> praising God. Isn't that a beautiful thing? Yeah. It's a beautiful thing to see you today. We uh, were overjoyed with last Sunday, uh, such a beautiful Easter day, and I know there were lots of activities with your family and friends and loved ones, but. It was just marvelous to see the wonderful crowd that assembled last week, the largest that we've had thus far this year, and, and I know that uh, things are opening back up in our community and in the society, and vaccinations are rising, and the COVID numbers are going down. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. We're so grateful for that, and uh, I couldn't help but a few times last Sunday just stop and listen, listen to the sounds in here, listen to the sounds of greetings and fellowships and reunions and visiting and, and kids playing and just the sounds of life as this place came alive last week. And we are looking forward to more and more times like that together. And that includes today. We are glad that you are here. As we think about life getting back toward normal, there's a lot of things that we've missed, isn't there? There's a lot of things that uh, we have... Uh, had taken away from us for a while, things that we took for granted, 
things that we hope to get back and never lose again. But I would hasten to add, too, that there's some things that we discovered during the last year or so, some things that maybe um, weren't the best way of doing things, the best way of living life. and Maybe we've made some adjustments and reprioritized things, and, and good things can come from difficulty, and we've seen that as well. But as we think about life getting back to normal, not only for us individually at work or at school or in our community or at in our church fellowship. But what about us spiritually? Are we where we want to be? Are we ready to maybe step forward to a greater level of, of a relationship with the Lord, a greater level of fellowship with each other, a greater level of service? Uh, if you're like me, I, I'm never content with the person I am right now. I'm always willing and wanting to grow and to become more for the Lord, more for my family, more for you, more for everyone. And so this morning's lesson I've entitled, What Kind of Change Are You Looking For? As we looked last week at the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we realized that people that were close to Jesus were struggling with the death of Jesus. There wasn't a resurrection breakfast or reception for Jesus at the tomb. They thought he was dead, he was gone, and it was over. And they were struggling. There was a lot of crying. There was a lot of uh, depression. There was a lot of isolation. There were a lot of hand-wringing. There was a lot of doubting. There was a lot of fear. But when Christ came back from the dead and manifested himself to so many people, and people knew that he was alive, that he had conquered death, that he had conquered the grave, and gain victory over Satan, and that He empowers all of us in each of those same areas that we have gained victory over death, that we have gained victory over the grave, and we have gained victory over sin and over the devil. Aren't those wonderful things to know that we have in Jesus? Well, as we begin our study today, things have progressed a little bit. On the day of Pentecost, the disciples were together as Jesus instructed, one accord in one place, room uh, was filled with the sound as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the room where they were all standing and cloven tongues like a fire sat on top of the apostles heads and they each began speaking in tongues or other languages they had not studied as the spirit gave them utterance now it was nine o'clock in the morning and yet some people thought well these people are drunk Peter says it's only nine o'clock in the morning no one's drunk but this is what was prophesied by Joel this was what for, was foretold years ago. It's coming to pass. The Holy Spirit is here, just as Jesus had foretold. And then he began preaching to them the first gospel sermon recorded in Scripture. That this same Jesus whom you have crucified, God has made him both Lord and Christ. And with many other words did he testify and exhort to them, saying, Save yourselves from this wicked generation. And they that gladly received his word were baptized. And there were added unto them that day about 3,000 souls. Revival was on. People were coming to obey the Lord and to make him their Lord and Savior. So just a little bit after that, a day or two later, Peter and John are on their way to the temple. It's the hour of prayer. They arrive at the gate beautiful. Laid at the gate beautiful was a lame man who, because he was not employable, became a beggar. We see people who are asking for money in our society today, don't we? They'll be at the intersections of uh, certain highways or roads. They'll be outside of stores. They'll be at exit ramps all over. Many of them hold up a sign telling us their situation or asking us for any kind of help or, or food or money or whatever they're looking for. Many of them are disdained by society. Many people won't even look at them. They won't let their lives meet with them. Some people will say harsh words and ugly things. Get a job, you lazy bum. Things like that. But this man couldn't work. The only way of providing for his needs was to beg. How difficult that must have been. And he was sat by friends at this gate where hundreds upon hundreds of people would go in day in and day out to be a part of the festivities in the temple. Peter and John are on their way to the temple and they meet the lame man. 
there's a, quite a bustle of people there. And Peter looks at the man and he says, look at us. The man looked over at them because he thought they were about to give him a gift. And Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I unto thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he reached down and took him by his right hand and stood him up on his feet. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength and he was healed. And he became, he stood up, began walking, jumping and rejoicing, praising God that he was healed. Now I want you to think about the power of that moment. I don't know if you're familiar with something called atrophy. Atrophy occurs with a lot of people who are bedfast, <clears throat> perhaps someone who's paralyzed, someone who's in a nursing home. Physical therapy is so important for people in those particular situations. Therapists will come in and will <clears throat> manually move the arms and the legs to simulate movement in the body as if they were walking, as if they were lifting and moving to keep the muscle tone and the muscles from deteriorating. <clears throat> but if that doesn't happen, atrophy will set in as is the case with this gentleman on this bed. Look at his arms. His arms are uh, deteriorating. Uh, I've seen people that are so uh, overcome by atrophy that it looks like skin stretched over bones. There's no more muscular structure. And so this man who had never walked, who was lame from birth, was laying there at the gate, not prepared for, not anticipating, this wonderful day in his life. The day he probably never even dreamed of, never thought possible, but a day that happened by the power of Jesus Christ. And so he, he's able to stand and to walk and to rejoice. Now I want you to understand for a moment that this is Peter and John. These two guys had just been through so much at the death and the resurrection of Jesus. They were scared in many ways. It was Peter who was pivoting back and forth between fear and courage. One moment, he's declaring that he would even die with the Lord if necessary. Jesus prophesies to him that before dawn, before the rooster crows, you're going to deny me three times. Peter said, ah, it's not going to happen. When the soldiers come to arrest Jesus in the garden, Peter is full of defiance. He's full of faith. He's wanting to do what he promised he would do. He draws his sword and cuts off the ear of the servant of the high priest, Malchus. Jesus says, Peter, put away your sword. Those that live by the sword shall die by the sword. Jesus reached down and grabbed his ear and put the ear of Malchus back on. And Peter fled. He sneaks back around to the place where Jesus is being tried. He doesn't want to be recognized, but lo and behold, he is three times. And every time somebody says, well, you're one of them. Surely your speech betrays you, or I recognize you. And he denied it vehemently, even to the point that he even cursed. And the cock crowed. And Jesus turned and met his eyes. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. And from that moment of failure when he denied the Lord until Jesus come back from the dead, I think Peter was a mess. But after Jesus come back from the dead and he saw him and spent time with him and Jesus restored his position back to him and told him to go feed my lambs, Peter became transformed and changed into the man of God Jesus knew was there. So he now is boldly proclaiming Jesus Christ as Lord. <clears throat> so he took him by the hand, he raised him up, and suddenly, I want you to envision this for a minute, if this man no doubt had atrophy, those, the skin was just wrapped around bone, all of a sudden, if you were watching, all of a sudden, muscle structure would have been revived suddenly. Just like somebody putting air in a balloon. That muscle structure would have gone. And though he had never learned to walk, Peter stood him up, 
Not only did he become walking, but he began running and leaping and praising God. And when everyone saw it, they too worshipped God. Verse 9. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Looking down at verse 21 of the next chapter, it says, After further threats, they let them go. They could not decide how to punish them, that being the apostles, because all of the people were praising God for what had happened. For the man who was miraculously healed was over 40 years old. Now, is anybody here 40? 40 going once. 40 going twice. Somebody's got to be close to 40. Who's close to 40? Rachel, are you close to 40? We're not going to ask you specifically the date and time. But Rachel's close to 40. How many of you have known Rachel a long, long time? Anybody? Think about if you had known Rachel, and maybe you had known her from the day she was born, and Rachel had never walked. Rachel was pushed around in a wheelchair, and her bones were all that was left with skin wrapped around them. And you saw her day in and day out, week in and week out, month in and month out, year after year, till she is at the current age. And all of a sudden, she's healed. All of a sudden, muscular structure is restored, and she not only begins walking, but jumping and running and Praising God, no doubt. How wonderful that would be. How exciting that would be. And how that would be so unusual that only God could have made that happen. Which was the purpose of miracles in the Bible. The purpose of miracles was not primarily just for the person who received that miracle. It wasn't just for the lame man. Primarily, the miracle was for everybody who knew him. For everybody who saw him. For everybody who walked by that gate day in and day out and saw a lame man. When they saw him walking and jumping and praising God, they knew God had acted. There was no other answer. There was no other remedy. It had to be God. And of course, as people saw that and experienced that joyous occasion, people wanted to be a part of that. They wanted to shout and rejoice and jump and praise God with him. And they wanted what? They wanted that in their life. That was a a wonderful time to be alive. It was a wonderful time to be present. It was a wonderful time to be at the temple. There had never been another day like it at the temple. How exciting that must have been. I digress to today. How many of you, a few months ago, were sad, down, lonely, isolated? You couldn't see the ones you loved. You missed getting a hug from the family or friends or loved ones. This building was dark and quiet. Anybody struggle with that? Anybody else besides me have a hard time with that? And we kept thinking this is going to blow over soon, and it didn't. Days became weeks, and weeks became months, and months became years. And we just surpassed a year into our second year of dealing with COVID. But there is joy now. We see a light at the end of the tunnel. We see the possibilities of what lie before us, of getting back toward normal again. There are people who are now smiling, laughing, joking, Visiting, coming to services. It's like a rebirth. It's like a renewal. It is, a, it is so happy. It is so great. It is so wonderful. I want you to know that we're at a pivotal time in this country and in our community because there are a lot of people still struggling. There are a lot of people that still don't have any sort of direction in their life don't have any purpose in their life. They're not filled with joy yet. They're looking for some sort of happiness and peace and comfort. And folks, I want to tell you something. You already have what they're looking for. It's Jesus. 
It's faith, real faith, that brings about peace in your soul, in your deepest parts of your spirit. It's the joy of knowing that you have someone walking with you day by day. The great creator of the universe will never leave you nor forsake you. And that by His power, He's watching over you and guiding your steps, assisting you in your daily life. Isn't there joy in that? Isn't there peace in that? Isn't there comfort in that? And to be together physically again is an answer to prayer. It's something that we were all longing for, and it's coming to pass day by day. Isn't that something to be excited about? Folks, I'm going to tell you something. That's what people in our community right now are looking for. They're looking for some place to find happiness, joy, purpose, and peace. And we have it. It's time to share it. May we be like Peter and John. May we go out proclaiming the gospel and making a difference. So we carry on in our reading with chapter 4. In chapter 4, I didn't get verse 5. I'll have to read it from my Bible for you. The Jewish leaders hear all the commotion that's going on in the temple, and they realize that the apostles are preaching that Jesus has been resurrected from the dead, and it is the power of Jesus that has made this man whole, and they see the great commotion. They see the great tumult. They see all these people rejoicing, and so they decided, we're going to have to get a hold of this. We've got to get control of this. So they had them arrested. They actually spent a night in jail. Now I want you to think about something for a minute. These are the same men responsible for the death of Jesus on the cross, and now they have apprehended the apostles and put them in prison. They're there for the night. This was not a time to cower. This was not a time to be full of fear. This was a time to be courageous. This was a time to be bold. This was a time to believe. This was a time to know that God had put them in this place, in this moment, for His glory. I want to say to you and I today, it is not an accident that you are born and that you're here right now, in this time, in this place, at this moment, for His glory and His purpose. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's about Him. And it'll always be about Him that God has put us where He needs us to bring others to Him, to bring glory to His name. So we're looking at verse 5. The next day, the elders, the rulers, the elders, and teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. Annas the high priest was there, and so was Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and the other men of the high priest's family. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them. By what a power or authority or name do you do this? Listen to this. This is Peter. This is the same guy that was scared to death. Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit. He said, rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a cripple and are asked how he was healed, then know this. Pick up with my very human verse 10. And all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you have crucified, both whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you whole. He, he was talking to the very ones that killed Jesus. But filled with the Spirit, he said, I just want you to know, you ask, I'm going to tell you. It is by the name of the man that you crucified, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, that he stands before you whole. You talk about boldness. You talk about faith. You talk about courage. Peter had it. Peter had it because of the resurrection. Peter had it because of the power of the Spirit in his life. And he boldly told the truth. He told it like it was, regardless of what it was going to cost him. He is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is not found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, that they were astonished, and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. 
Folks, I'm going to tell you something. There is no greater thing that anybody can say about you than you've been with Jesus and he's rubbing off on you. I'm going to ask you a question. Have you been with Jesus? Have you been empowered by his spirit that lives in you to be dynamically different than those of the world? To be dynamically changed in the person that God ordained you to be? I encourage all of us to be men and women of faith. To cast fear aside. To step forward with boldness. To trust in Jesus that He is going to sustain us and take care of us. When Peter boldly proclaimed Jesus Christ as Savior and healer of the lame man, he didn't know what was fixing to happen. He didn't know what might take place. But he knew what truth was. And he boldly proclaimed it. And he let God take care of the rest. I want to tell you something today. I don't know, who, I don't know what the future holds, but I know who holds the future. I don't know what may happen in the days to come. But I don't want to cower in fear. I don't want to be isolated anymore. I want to step forward and be counted on for the name of Jesus Christ that I might proclaim Him as Lord of all. He is the hope of a better world. If you are sick and tired of our society and the moral decay, the filth, the evil, and the wickedness of this world, don't cower in the corner. Don't hide in the basement. You step forward and boldly proclaim by the power of the Spirit that Jesus Christ is the answer, that Jesus Christ is Lord, and that Jesus Christ is here to save this world, redeem this world, and to make men whole. You don't need a special class. You don't need to go to some special place here or there. What people need is Jesus. And what we have, we need to share. We need to proclaim. We need to live. Paul said in Ephesians chapter 3, beginning with verse 14, For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom... Let me watch these steps first. They want to boldly catch a step in the face. <clears throat> from whom his whole family of heaven and earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through His Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of the fullness of God. I pray that for all of us. I pray that for you this morning. There are three things I want you to take from today's lesson. The first is this. God can and will transform and change us into a power, in a powerful way today. Do you believe that? Secondly, we all need to be renewed, revived, and refocused as we emerge from our cocoon to begin life as normal together again. Amen? Do you need to get a shot in your arm? I don't mean a vaccine. I mean, are you ready to get fired up for the Lord? Are you ready to be about His business? I hope you are. That's what the world's looking for. It's what the world needs. And finally, there is no limit to what God can accomplish in us and through us. The only way that God is limited is us limiting His work in us. Get out of the way and let God have His way. Amen? Paul says, therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Listen to this. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. If there was ever a time that our world needed God to move, to take away fear, to give us power and love and a strong mind, it's right now. Paul says in Romans Romans 12, 1 and 2, and then the lesson is yours. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. 
And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I left it at home. My wife is bringing it for second service. Sorry about you. But I have a quarter and I have some aluminum foil. And I wrap that quarter around that aluminum foil. And I rub it and I rub it and I rub it. And I keep moving on it and moving on it. And then on the back side, I peel it open and pull that quarter out. And then I put it back together and shape it and form it. And when I hold it in my hand, I'll ask you, what's in my hand? And you know what you'll say? A quarter. But the truth of the matter is, it's just a piece of metal. It's just foil. There's no quarter there. It has no intrinsic value. It's just foil. But it's been shaped and conformed and molded to the shape of the quarter. Folks, I'm going to tell you something. One of the most dangerous things will happen to you and I is to be conformed by the world to the world. To let it shape the way you think. To let it shape the way you live. To let it shape who you are. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. He has not given us this spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. May God help us to that end. In Jesus' name. If you need to come to Him today, it be a great time to do it. As together we stand and sing. As we prepare our hearts and minds for the Lord's Supper and the thoughts that Stan Watson is going to bring to us, we're saying, come share the Lord. We gather here in Jesus' name. His love is burning in our hearts like living flame. For through the loving Son, Father makes us one. Come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the Lord. No one is a stranger here. Everyone belongs. Finding our forgiveness here. Forgive all wrongs. He joins us here. 
we'll gather soon. Where angels sing, we'll see the glory of our Lord and coming King. Now we anticipate the feast for which we wait. Come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the If you didn't get one of the kits for communion, please raise your hand at this time and someone will attend to you. Some, uh, some God's word you don't have to read a whole lot and get a lot out of it. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his own son, his only son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God not, did not send his son to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Let us pray. In Jesus' name. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning thanking you so much for, for life and for the honor we have to, to worship you this morning and for your son Jesus and the sacrifice that was made for his life, the example he gave us, and for the sacrifice that was made on our behalf. At this time, as we partake of this bread, which represents his body, take our minds back to that cross. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Pray with me again, please. In like manner, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blood that was shed on the cross, the cleansing power it has in our, in our lives, and once again for the sacrifice that was made for us, not worthy of it, but you went ahead and did it anyhow. And we thank you so much for that this morning. As we partake of this fruit of the vine, which represents that blood, be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As always, we're truly blessed that you can be a part of our worship service this morning. I hope that you'll return here this evening for our evening service with uh, Kevin as he continues to bless them in the uh, sermon of Mark. Uh, that service is supposed to be at 5 o'clock. I hope that you'll be able to join us. Our last song today will be when all the best singers get home, then after that, Joe Simmons will have a good kitchen for us. What a song of delight and it seems so bright. We learned in the heavens with a goal. How the ransom will raise and be sung in its praise. When all the God singers get home. When all the God singers get home. Whenever a sorrow will come.
you bow with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you again for blessing us with this opportunity to gather here this morning to hear your, your word, to sing these songs of praise. Lord, we have a, a great number that we need to pray for, those that are sick. Lord, we, we ask a, a special blessing on, on Brooke as she is, is recovering. Lord, we ask that you be with Jonathan Forrest and, and his family and the loss of his grandmother. Lord, we ask uh, a blessing on, on Julie Maynard, uh, was involved in an a accident the last few days. Lord, we, we thank you for being with her and, and, and guarding her. Lord, we have so many of our number that are sick, those that are undergoing procedures. Lord, we just ask that you be with be with them, bring them back to their everyday walk of life. Lord, we, we thank you again for giving us this opportunity to gather here this morning. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.